morning, Trevor Bernard here. Um, I'm here to talk about sheep and goats this morning. Now, one of the questions being asked in recent times is why is it that I prefer to rear sheep and goats and rabbit? And I grew up with goats as a child. I had goats, we used to rear goats, but in those days we used to just let out the animals and they just ran into the bush, forage and come back. Now, I was doing all of this in Kingston because Kingston wasn't that developed in that time and you had a lot of bush all over the place in the halfway tree area that I used to rear animals. So I used to look after these animals as a child. Now, what used to happen is that over time, you used to have animals every now and again you had deaths some animals would die in the rainy season you lose a lot of animals and in recent times i've been talking about what happens with the different diseases and sicknesses and so forth that happen in the rainy time in the rainy season and things that happen now we are moving towards more intensive farming and taking better care of the animals because now we are being very scientific about rearing these animals. The reason why I think goats and sheep and rabbits are a better animal to rear is because they eat foragers. You don't they eat in the grass and the trees and the bush and you know any forages like that and they can live and survive on these forages. When you rear chicken or pigs or other animals, you have to depend on the corn and the soya bean and these feeding that we actually import from abroad. These feedings are, you know, if in, in this time of pandemic, can you imagine what will happen if, you know, the ship starts, stops sailing and even right now the plane stops flying. You know, we won't be able to import all these ingredients and it can become a problem. So goats can survive on just forages. They can survive on just plant material and do very, very well. But we have to pay attention to managing systems and how we manage these animals. You know, you have times when you see some farmers, the animals get sick, the animals, you know, go down and die in the rainy seasons. People lose 10 animals, 12 animals. And you find that most farmers don't get to grow and have large herds of, family, of, of animals because as soon as the herds start to grow, the bigger the herds get, is the more sicknesses, the more diseases, the more things that start happening. And things happen in a big way when, you're anim when you have a lot of animals. So we have to pay attention to some of these diseases. And we're going to talk about it today. I am going to concentrate and focus on overeating or tetanus or overeating. It's the same family of, of, of organism, tetanus and overeating. Australian by pronouncing word. This thing exists in the soil. It is in the soil everywhere. And this organism, especially with the tetanus, what happens if the animal gets a cut or a bruise or anything, it will enter into the bloodstream and then the animal will get sick. Recently, I de some of these young kids. Uh, this is my new young herd here. And I, I de some of these kids that you see here. I did it at six weeks, but when I did this dehorning at six weeks, I did not vaccinate the animals. And what happened, one of these animals got lock up. He got stiff, is he started to walk like a like a saddle. He, when he fall down, he fall down on his side and you had to pick him up back to stand up. All his, all his muscles get stiff. And what happens when they get set enough? organs get stiff and they will collapse inside of him and you hear the goat start breathing and gasping for breath you know it damages the animals internal sick organs and everything so that they will die i have never seen an animal survive tetanus once they get tetanus they usually die this kid was one of the kids that i de on but I did not vaccinate him, him. You the kid so he died soon after as he had you know, tetanus at this time. See how he's walking very strange, posty like. When he fell down, he could not get up by himself. The overheating is usually that really nice, beautiful animal, a nice ram that you have. And he will be just doing so good, growing and putting on weight. And usually when you wean off the kid, and you will wean off a kid and that kid 
will be eating a lot of grains because it usually happens when they're eating a lot of grains because the bacteria end up in the grains it comes from the soil and everywhere and that animal will be just eating the grains and putting on the weight putting on the weight and this is when it's the best animal you'll see this animal running up and down healthy strong and powerful and the next morning you come it's dead and usually this bacteria is the one that affects the animal now with this the only way to guard against this is with vaccine vaccination is very important to the animals and i think the tetanus vaccine is absolutely important you must vaccinate the animal usually you inject the animal under the skin and and usually on the, 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 the vaccination bottle it will tell you usually like two cc's or support you usually give the animals how do you do vaccination so usually the mother four to six weeks before she have kid you usually vaccinate the mother this usually protects the kids because the antibodies and support get into the colostrum and you get a super colostrum so when this kid is feeding from the mother this colostrum milk is very important that the kid when they're born they drink that colostrum milk and if you have a kid and the mother died try and make sure they get some of that colostrum because it protects the kids from a lot of different sicknesses so that's one way of doing it and then usually you don't have to vaccinate until when you wean off the kids so usually at the third month you can vaccinate the kids against tetanus another way of doing it is that sometimes if you did not vaccinate the mother while she was pregnant then you usually vaccinate the kids at about anywhere from four weeks to eight weeks old you do vaccination and remember make sure you vaccinate the animals before you dehorn them because i lost a kid recently because i did that so it is important to vaccinate before you dehorn the animals when we were kids i remember my parents always saying if a nail if you get a rusty nail stick in your foot usually you have to go get a tetanus shot it's the same it's the same same kind of bacteria and um it is very important to, to, to guard against tetanus because really a lot of people lose animals i remember I had a farmer who bought a young ram from me, a lamb, it was a ram for his herd and he also went and bought some females from another farm. He had I think a total of seven females and that ram. And a couple of weeks after he bought the animals, all the females died. And when I had the discussion with them, he said oh, they were doing very well, they were eating a lot, they were you know, really doing very well and he just got up and saw the females just died off one by one. But the ram never died and the reason i thought at the time what, what what was happening is that those females that he bought from the other farm they were not vaccinated but the ram that i sold him he was vaccinated i want you to remember also that the kids are your profit you have to make sure that you keep all the kids alive as best as possible these young kids are very delicate and very tender when they are young and they need a lot of attention you have to pay attention to them when they are young and make sure that you have good management practices in throughout their life as kids to grow up because some of these ram kids this is what you're going to be selling back to make a profit out of your growth herd and you're also going to be using these younger females to expand your farm management you have to manage your farm very very good if you don't manage it then you always have animals that are sick and get um, you know and get into all kind of problems goats don't usually get sick if you have a good management system and you take good care of them feed cleanliness and make sure that you follow all the procedures and the right methodologies in looking after these goats they don't get sick normally whenever you enter into your goat pen you normally or, or you look at your herd you always look for alertness of the animals if you see the animals is walking slow or you know they're not eating or you know the tail is not springing up their tail their tail just hang down and they look lethargic you know something is wrong with that animal and you have to pay attention now and look and see what is really happening you have to check for all the different things that can be going on with this animal i remember this female here 
she is my old mother she's about i think she's probably about nine years old now i just did ai on all these females i did ai on nine of these females nine of these nubian females that i have here so she is an old mother she had two kids on her and i came one morning we came and she was down on her knees she was kneeling down on her knees and usually when you sit at the kneeling down it's usually some deficiencies in nutrients you know usually it has to do with nutrition and when i realized the minerals i always have minerals in my mineral box you see this one no they broke this box down and there's no mineral in it now but i always have minerals inside my pen and the minerals was finished the bag of minerals was finished and they did not get any minerals for about three or four or five days and you know the mineral helps a lot with the milk production you know and the energy you know energy is also very important for the animals so i went quickly and i got the minerals and i started to give her give her back the mineral also another thing too is the fish oil fish oil has a lot of energy in it this is something that i want you to pay attention to because normally when the minerals is not there and the energy is not there and it could you have two kids drinking from that mother she will deplete and get weak very quickly so it is very important to keep minerals on your herd this is, it. This is the reason why you have to observe the animals walk through the herd pay attention to every animal and see how the animals are behaving you know as you see i'm here with these animals they are coming they are rubbing up on me they are you know playing with me you know that they are okay and they have been fed we just gave them some wild tamarind here and they are eating the wild tamarind and eating the seed you can see this young kid here eating the, the seed from the wild tamarind they love wild tamarind so i'm here now with them trying to take a good look at all of them thank you so much for watching my videos please i hope that this video will be very helpful to all my farmer friends out there thanks for subscribing to my channel please don't forget to subscribe and press the notification bell that you can see all my videos as they are coming out thank you Yeah, get too good at it.